In the northernmost tip of our planet, within an area of ocean located only a short distance away from the tundras and boreal forests that dominate the Arctic, the crust of the Earth is literally tearing itself apart. This is the Arctic Mid-Ocean Ridge, and this is the area that marks the line where two massive tectonic plates are literally tearing apart from one another. But in this mid-ocean ridge, we have something rather peculiar occurring. For some reason, one of the largest supervolcanoes that we've ever discovered erupted here quite recently, with it occurring around 1 million years ago. This is strange. Mid-ocean rift zones are never associated with explosive volcanoes of this calibre, making this the first time we've ever really found something like this. I mean, this supervolcano released an eruption that was literally larger than the Lake Toba super eruption that occurred some 75,000 years ago. And not only was this eruption dramatically large, but researchers said, and I quote, we consider the described caldera as an evidence of some new form of volcanism related to this type of plate boundary, meaning this volcano seems to have rewritten the rules of volcanology. These types of events form something known as a rift zone, and rift zones are unsurprisingly very hostile environments to be near when they are active. They can occur in the ocean, like this one did, or on dry land, like the one that's currently forming in East Africa. If this supervolcano existed in a continental rift zone, I wouldn't be surprised at all that an explosive supervolcano formed. But since it formed in an oceanic rift zone, this raises so many questions. So in this video we're going to touch on that and more, as we endeavour to find the answers to several questions that I have about this supervolcano. From how large the eruption was, to why it occurred in the first place, in the middle of an oceanic rift zone. And I'll also touch more on why it's so strange that this happened here in the first place. The two plates responsible for forming the supervolcano in this discussion are the North American and Eurasian plates, which are moving away from each other at a very slow rate. I'll come back to this fact later on. The area where we can find this supervolcano is called the Gackle Ridge, and to no one's surprise, the eruption centre itself is called the Gackle Ridge Caldera as a result of this. This entire depression here is actually the caldera, this volcano is actually still active, and it last erupted around a million years ago, so it's currently priming for its next major eruption right now as you watch this video. So back to the tectonic event that's fueling it. These kinds of rift events are more formally known as divergent plate boundaries. And as you can probably imagine, the fact that two major pieces of crust that were once sutured together are suddenly ripping apart is creating the perfect environment for pronounced weaknesses in the land to form, as the crust here thins ever more as this stretch continues, creating major faulting and fracturing to the rocks that line it in the process. When this occurs, magma readily rises from the Earth's mantle due to buoyancy to fill the ever-expanding voids utilising the newly formed fault lines as a conduit to do so. When magma does this in an oceanic setting, the results are usually major lava flows and volcanoes that erupt in a similar fashion to how Hawaiian and Icelandic volcanoes do, with low explosive but highly effusive eruptions that pour a voluminous amount of mafic magma out, and in this case it does so on the ocean floor. The reason these lava flows aren't normally explosive is because the magma itself stays true to its chemical origin, meaning as it rises from the mantle it doesn't really change in its chemical composition all that much as it makes its journey upwards, and it remains as a magma that's low in silica and is mafic in its origin, meaning it's high in magnesium and iron. But to keep this simplified, we'll refer to these rocks as basalt, even though there are several other mafic rocks but basalt is the most common. So basalt rises from the Earth's mantle and erupts as lava on the ocean floor. But if this happens in a continental section of land, such as what is occurring in East Africa, then things are far more dangerous. Because as magma rises from the mantle, it will melt the rocks that line the crust of the East African landmass as it ascends, and when it settles in the magma chamber, it'll do much of the same with the magma melting the rocks lining the walls of the chamber. The reason this is bad is because continental rocks are normally high in silica, so when this low silica magma from the Earth's mantle rises, it makes contact with these high silica continental rocks, 
and readily melts them and incorporates them into its own chemical composition, leading to a marked rise in the level of silica within the magma, creating the conditions necessary for major explosive volcanic eruptions to occur, because viscous magma has the ability to trap in volatile gases, which in turn increase the pressure levels of a magma chamber, and this will lead to very dangerous explosive volcanic eruptions and to the formation of supervolcanoes. East Africa will, in the not too distant future, be the most dangerous part of the planet to live in, as it will be dotted by major volcanoes, and the next wave of supervolcanoes will be forming there, mark my words. So now you know why it's so unusual to see an explosive volcano existing here, and why it's even more weird that it's not just some explosive volcano, it's actually one of the largest super eruptions that we've found thus far on our planet, and it's been documented quite well, as the studies that are backing it are very thorough. So the Gackle Ridge is the name given to the rift zone, and the Gackle Ridge caldera erupted around 1.1 million years ago, with an estimated eruptive volume of 3,000 cubic kilometers or 720 cubic miles, making it one of the most explosive volcanoes on Earth to have occurred during the Pleistocene, which to clarify is the geological period spanning from 2.58 million years ago to 11,700 years ago. And as previously mentioned, it's amazing because it's the only known supervolcano located directly on a mid-ocean ridge. The caldera is an impressive 80 kilometers or 49 miles long by 40 kilometers or 25 miles wide. And the caldera has a depth of 1200 meters or 3,937 feet, making it quite shallow in all honesty, which is bad because that means when this absolute monster of a volcano erupted, the ash cloud went subaerial meaning the plume more than likely exited the surface of the ocean and soared up towards the stratosphere, creating a volcanic winter in the process. The generation of a tsunami is possible as well, considering the strength this eruption reached, and the amount of material that was released during it. Thin layers of volcanic material that were blasted from the vent were found as far as 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles away from the Gackle Ridge. But this isn't the only eruption that's occurred here. There's others that were released from the Gackle volcano, but the one we are focusing on is by far the most powerful. It was so strong that it might have affected the actual spreading geometry of the eastern part of the Eurasian Basin. In present day, hydrothermal vents line the caldera, showing the fact that it's still very much alive and working hard within some cavernous batholith that's lying beneath the sea floor. But attempting to ascertain how this volcano formed to begin with is what fascinates me the most. We have some variables. Perhaps the best variable in this situation that can to some part explain what we see is the fact that this rift zone is the slowest to spread by a long shot when compared to other divergent plate boundaries on our planet, with it moving at a snail-like rate of under one centimeter per year. Compare that to the four to 10 centimeters that typical rift zones move at per year, and you can see where I'm going here. There's a chance that magma is just becoming more confined and is pressurizing because of this. But there's also another variable, and that's the fact that this part of the crust and mantle are very cold. Earthquakes have also been detected at Gackle that originate from the mantle, which is very unusual to witness in a mid-ocean ridge. Gaps in volcanic activity occur here, most likely as a result of the aforementioned factors. And it appears that these occurrences are what may explain the majority of the Gackle supervolcano's existence, but more research needs to be done. Before we conclude, there's one more fact that I find fascinating about the Gackle supervolcano. Not only is it the only known supervolcano to exist in a mid-ocean ridge, it's also the only one that's known to erupt at a supervolcanic scale from a magmatic fuel consisting of basalt and andesite, which are low silica rocks. Now that's some crazy stuff. I believe there's a correlation between the low temperature of the mantle and crust and the magma itself that's creating the conditions necessary for the explosivity witnessed here. This is just my opinion, but it's the situation that makes the most sense to me because even though silica is the primary factor that's responsible for the viscosity of magma, an often overlooked variable is temperature, which can also play a role in viscosity. Basaltic magma is the hottest magma known to exist, but if there's something that's actively working to cool it as it rises, it's going to naturally lower in temperature and become more viscous as a result. And this might serve to explain why Gackle exists. But I'm sure we'll know one day if there's any truth in my hypothesis. 
And this is why I love geology. There's no real hard or fast rules in this science. There's always some outlier or some variable that serves to completely baffle and contradict what we know. It's a science that's filled with adventure and that's why I'm so obsessed with it. It's a constant game of discovery to me and the Gackle Ridge Caldera serves as a prime example of something that we really wouldn't have expected to exist. And yet, here it is. Thanks for watching.